So a big event happened that we didn't talk about much of uh, because it's a live event and it wasn't one that was necessarily going to guarantee game announcements. Of course, we're talking about the Nintendo World Championships, which wrapped up, you know, hours ago at this point. And, uh, you know, maybe you're listening to this a bit later, but I wrapped up on Saturday. And I wanted to just give, uh, first off, a round of applause to all of the contestants, uh, especially the, the person who won at the end of the day and knocked off the defending champion. It's actually amazing. I mean, the defending champion made it all the way back to the finals, which is just an accomplishment in that of itself. But I also want to really, really thank Nintendo. See, when they brought back the Nintendo World Championships at E3 2015, I gotta admit, I kind of thought it was a gimmick. Uh, Yeah, they had some famous YouTubers on stage and some silly battles and professional players and all this stuff. It felt like a lot of grandstanding and a lot of just advertising their games. Uh, Which, you know, obviously the Nintendo World Championships way back in the day, the original Nintendo World Championships, did the same thing. They advertised their recent games uh, and, uh, you know, always had like a big, they had the big reveal. I think it was Super Mario Bros. 3 at the time at the end uh, for the final, you know, the championship game. Or maybe that was just from the movie. There was also a movie built based around it and that had Super Mario Bros. 3. Sometimes I get those two confused because I was so young at the time. I don't know if I could tell the difference between the movie and the real life Nintendo World Championships. Uh, but I just want to thank Nintendo for bringing it back and taking it seriously. Now, I'm still critical of Nintendo with anything that has to do with any sort of um, championship thing because they don't offer cash prizes, and I think if they offered uh, some sort of cash prize, uh, that is one way that they could really improve the competition. Now, of course, including the cash prize means you're going to get a lot of uh, pro players really trying to qualify, Uh, and that doesn't mean that pro players don't try to qualify just for the exposure uh, alone, but... Uh, you know, offering even like a scholarship because a lot of the com- competitors are younger. Uh, so offering a scholarship, I think, is even something they could do. Uh, just something, you know, even like like a donation to a charity, like a, a like a hundred thousand dollar donation to a charity of your choice would even be something that's pretty uh, pretty interesting and, and could add something to. It. Well, whatever. But setting that aside, I think Nintendo did an excellent job with the Nintendo World Championships this year. Uh, they improved the format, the underground, like because it's a round robin tournament, right? So you have to lose twice to get eliminated, and uh, the underground had a lot of very interesting games, uh, and the main games up in the winners bracket, you know, whatever they were calling it, they didn't call it a winners bracket, but that's essentially what it was in the winners bracket. Uh, was basically recent games plus Smash and Mario Maker. Uh, but that's to be expected, right? Nintendo has a lot of uh, really great competitive games that have come out in you know recent years. So it made a lot of sense to stick with those. And man, having the finale end with Super Mario Odyssey. I mean, I could see it coming a mile away, right? It has to be Mario Odyssey. It has to be Mario Odyssey. But it wasn't just that it was Mario Odyssey. It was content from Mario Odyssey we had never seen and content that showed extremely well. Uh, it showed that this game is not... Like, the the big fear of Mario Odyssey for some people is that it's going to be too easy. Uh, And surely there's going to be easy aspects of Super Mario Odyssey, but this showed the unique challenges that exist in Mario Odyssey. And man, was it an epic showdown. I highly suggest if you missed out on the Nintendo World Championships, I will put a link down in the description. It's a four-hour video, four-hour live stream, well worth watching all the way through. And I think this is just a really cool thing because the gaming industry hasn't had anything like the Nintendo World Championships until Nintendo brought them back in 2015. And again, 2015's version to me just felt like a lot of pop and circumstance. Uh, It didn't really feel like Nintendo themselves took it that seriously. But this one in 2017, man... They did a lot of things right. Whether or not you think the qualifying round with Mario Kart 7 uh, was was fair or correct or that there was enough locations or this and that, you know, that's neither here nor there. You know, at least you knew what the game was and they gave you time to prepare. Um, you know, there are some improvements I'd like to see. Uh, I would, because at the Nintendo World Championships, this finals, they added, they threw like all the age groups together. 
Um, I, I think it would be nice if they had at least two separate age groups where you had like the little kids, like the under 10 or under 12, whatever it was, uh, age group, and then, you, you know, an age group for over that. And so you end up with two Nintendo World Championship, you know, champions at the end you have the one that uh for the little kids and the one for the for the more the adults and the older the older kids and adults but again that's just my criticism maybe it would turn into an eight hour event if they did that i have no idea um but i just think personally i would have did that plus you could have allowed twice the amount of competitors um but whatever it's just a really uh interesting thing that i think they could do because let's be honest uh most kids that come out of the little age bracket uh, to make it to the Nintendo World Championships are not going to win it. Uh, you're going to be going up against people who are 16 and older uh, who are semi-professional gamers. Uh, you're not going to really stand a chance against that. Uh, you might be able to advance to some of the later rounds. I think there was um, someone from the younger age bracket who actually made it all the way up to the Splatoon 2 match. Uh, but, I mean, let's just be honest. They didn't really have a chance to, to win it. It is cool seeing them advance, of course, and perform well, but, uh, yeah, they, they just didn't stand a chance. But beyond that, um, I just, I'm just going to kind of go over some things that I really liked about the Nintendo World Championships. Uh, they did a very good job presenting the games. Uh, some of this is because they added spectator modes to certain games. Like Splatoon 2 showed really, really well. Uh, but I really like how they presented it. You know, the Mario Kart stuff, you had all... Uh, hit 12 players on screen at once, which was really cool. I mean, obviously, they flashed around to different moments and key stuff. The commentary was typical Nintendo. I mean, if you watch any Nintendo Treehouse live stream over the past how many years, you kind of get their shtick at this point um, about how they're going to handle commentary. They did they did a fine job. What was interesting is that they had actually some technical difficulties, and they somehow kept the stream entertaining while they were fixing those technical difficulties, and they got them fixed in relatively good time. I mean, Nintendo's uh, had a very professional presentation to all of this, uh, a very professional feeling. They got people from the media. They had Andrea in there, if you don't know who she is. Uh, you know, Andrea Roth, she does some stuff at Kind of Funny Games and she works at some other places and it, it, she's basically part of video game media and they got her in there to do some presenting of the awards and uh, it was just a really cool, cool event. Obviously heavily, you know, advertising Nintendo games, but it's a Nintendo World Championship, so did you really expect any different? Uh, there, there's also a video, I'll, I'll post a link to that down below, uh, from CND's channel. He was in the front row uh, and you can see the crowd just going nuts when Super Mario Odyssey Super Mario Odyssey was announced as the uh, game for the championship. And then uh, going nuts again uh, when the champion wins uh, and defeats the boss at the end. It's just, it's a crazy unique event that I think as gamers, we need to take a step back. I'm 31 years old. At this point, the chance of me ever making it to the to the uh, New York event or whatever for the Nintendo World Championships is, is slim to none. Uh, it's not going to uh, happen. <laughs> there's too many people who are younger than me with better reflexes that are probably going to get there. Maybe, maybe I'll make it through one year. I don't know, but I have a feeling I won't last very long. Uh, but it's just really cool that this exists. I mean, think about this. What other gaming company does anything like this? Now, that's not to say there aren't serious tournaments out there. I know all about the esports scene with the League of Legends and, you know, the Call of Duties of the world and the Maddens of the world. And, like, some of these, these games are heavily supported uh, by the developers and publishers but this is just this has a unique feel to it. This is a truly for everyone event. It's family friendly but serious. Uh, and this time around, the games they used and the modes they played. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe the biggest criticism was that they had 50 CC Mario Kart in there. But then at the same time, I feel I think they threw that in there to throw a wrench into 200 CC Mario Kart, which you had to do immediately after. Um, I kind of think that was kind of a neat troll. The 50 CC race wasn't necessarily that entertaining, but it was a troll that threw off people for going into 200 CC. Because um, Nintendo would like to throw some wrenches in there. Uh, I think it was a little unfair, you know, having Splatoon 2 so late in the tournament. But again, whatever. Everything worked out. The match ended up being, I mean, the Splatoon 2 match was one of my favorite, both of them. Both the matches, like my favorite matches in the entire event came from Splatoon 2. The Super Mario Odyssey stuff at the end was also really, really interesting because it was all brand new. 
and watching the different skill levels and all that. But I, I got to say, this just... Let me know what you guys think. If you caught the Nintendo World Championships, I'm really interested in what you guys think about it. Uh, I just, I'm so thankful, Nintendo. Thank you, Nintendo. This is, this needs to, to happen. This needs to keep happening. I would love for it to be yearly. I don't know if Nintendo has plans to do it yearly. Uh, if you look at it, they did it in 2015. Now they've done it in 2017. Uh, if they keep up with that pace, it'll be on all the odd years. So 2019, 2021, 2023. Uh, but I hope they keep it going because it's really, really good for the fans. I mean, the, I don't know what the peak viewers were, but it was regularly over 25,000 viewers just on live viewers at a time, just on, on YouTube. Who knows what it was if you caught Twitch in there. Plus, you have people who are watching on their TVs. And I don't even know if you could watch it through your Switch at the time. I didn't even check. Uh, just a crazy, crazy event that was a lot of fun to watch. I, it reminded if you ever wondered why people love Nintendo, all you have to do is watch the Nintendo World Championships and just see the reactions of the fans that are there, see the reactions of the gamers, see the see the games. Like this this is why people love them. This is why I love Nintendo. I sometimes people wonder why I run a Nintendo channel when I'm like a tech enthusiast. Um, I own an Xbox One. I play a lot of games on PC. Uh, and sometimes Nintendo, uh, through periods of my life, becomes my least played system. But watching the Nintendo World Championships, and it encapsulates every single reason why I love Nintendo and why I run a Nintendo channel. I couldn't be happier. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Nintendo. Even though you're probably going to claim this video because I plan to throw some clips of, uh, <laughs> of the championships in here. I don't even care at this point. I'm so happy and thrilled that this happened. Um... Anyways, folks, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you think there's ways that could make it better, you know, the things you like, the things you don't like. Um, and, yeah, I, I love it. This, to me, was a huge step forward from 2015, and they'll probably take another huge step forward next time around. Anyways, folks, uh, I will note one thing. I know there's going to be someone down in the comments that's going to say it shouldn't be called World Championships because it's only the United States. I, under hear, I understand you. I hear you. But the Nintendo World Championships was always an American thing. So uh, it's just going to stay an American thing. It's ran by Nintendo of America. That's just the way it is. If you would like your own uh, local Nintendo, like Nintendo UK or Nintendo Japan or whatever, to run a World Championship style event, you need to talk to them and get them to run an event because it's not going to be the same as the event in the United States. Anyways, folks, I'm Nintendo Rover Jans from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, well dislike it <laughs> anyways folks i hope you enjoy the footage of this i hope you enjoy the nintendo world championships and i will catch you in the next one